excited to get some cheers, so Canada. Yeah! Woo! I'm not Canadian, but I realize that kind of gets me quite wrong. I also want to take a quick picture of you guys. I can ask you to please stand up and look excited for coming to this amazing conference and make a silly pose. Alright, everyone up. I want to kind of a shout, scream, a woo, ready to go, type thing. I'm three. I'm not nervous falling off the stage. One, two, three. Okay. Um, when Melinda first asked us to do this, she said that she was requesting us to do a Pecha Kucha style presentation. And for those of you that are not familiar with that, Pecha Kucha, I think, is a Japanese style presentation, which is 20 slides for 20 seconds. Um, they're supposed to automatically go on their own. So being the idiot that I am, I thought that we were all going to do Pecha Kuchas and follow the rules, and so I planned a Pecha Kucha. <laughs> Until I arrived and realized that wasn't the case at all. And now I'm feeling very, very nervous about it. But I negotiated with David two to three minute introduction. Two? He said two to three. Anyway, the, clock, the, the clock's running. So I have a two minute introduction just to kind of tell you the story of what's going to happen. Because I have a feeling it's going to kind of come at you like a, a whirlwind. I tend to talk pretty fast anyway. Um, but... 20 seconds ago, I didn't have time. So anyway, um, we're going to hear a lot about networks and PLNs and personal networks. I think it's become kind of the, the catchphrase these days online. Um, and not to devalue the concept of the personal network, but I want to kind of put the personal into the learning network. And I just want to share a story with you of 20 people that are part of my network. And I feel kind of bad because last night I was thinking there are probably even more people than that in this room that should be in this presentation that aren't right now. But these are the 20 that I sat down and said, I'm going to make a list of 20. And they came up basically in this order um, of people that came to my head. And these are the people that helped me every single day. So as I go through the story, um, I hope that you guys see that a network is a unique experience to you. And each one is different. But I just wanted to share the story of my network with you. Um, another quick caveat, and I'll get started. In 2008, I came to this conference, kind of a you know, bright eyed dough near the headlights. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know anybody. I wrote a blog that I think maybe my mom read sometimes. Um, and I got to hang out with people like Dave Jakes, and there's all these big names. And I was all like, oh, who are these people? And it was just kind of really, really overwhelming. Um, three years later, and with these people, things have come a long way. And now here I am on the stage presenting this to you guys. So this is the story of my. Okay, so 20 seconds are going to go, so... Oh, that's one more thing. I told myself that I was going to stop at each person in 20 seconds, so if the slide changes and you're one of those people and I just stop talking about you, please don't be offended. <laughs> and I also want some crowd participation, because I'm not always going to be looking. If a slide changes behind me, why don't you guys just do one of these? <laughs> okay, so practice. Slide change. <laughs> Perfect. It all starts with Kim. Kim Kofina. Uh, I started working with Kim in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, in 2000-something. Um, and she claims that I'm her first protege. And I, it was, because I was in the process of taking photographs and writing things and learning Dreamweaver to make a website to somehow post all this stuff. And she came up to me, she's like, this is faster than I thought. Alan Levine is the first person I met when I was in uh, Shanghai in 2008. One of the big names that really struck me. And ever since I've known him since then, He's an amazing, should be at Cogdog there. Um, but anyway, he's an amazing photographer, a person who's pushing the envelope all the time. He's got me thinking 24 seven. <laughs> Jennifer Dalby is someone who started, I met through Alan and kind of introduced me to the concept of edupunk, which was kind of a catchphrase a couple of years ago that opened up my world to people who were just doing things, pushing the envelope beyond belief. And she's someone who challenges me constantly. Every time I get kind of full of myself, I think I know what I'm talking about, she kind of says, no, you're really not. Try something different. Jim Groom, I would say that he's probably kind of a Ken Kesey, Mary Penster, Hunter S. Thompson of the internet these days. He's doing things that are mind boggling. If you're not familiar with DS106, the course, I highly suggest you Google it and see because it's on the cutting edge. Actually, right now, I'm broadcasting live to DS106 Radio, and there are people all over the world. Uh, next, Dean Shersky. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him for the first time at NEC a couple of years ago. Um, and at the time, he was still kind of a big name for me, and it was kind of awkward, I didn't really know him. But since then, he's asked me to participate in a K-12 
online conference that he interviewed me for uh, about online sharing and being open and things like that. Alec Peroso, um, the human BitTorrent is his nickname, he'll be coming later. He's kind of my mentor, I didn't say the word hero because he's standing right there, but um, I've, my philosophy of how I interact online is based on a lot of his philosophy. philosophy. It's open, constant, and just share as much as you can, often, all the time. And you'll hear a lot from him during the conference. Adrian McKenney, who I had not met ever, but I've been in contact with for three years through Twitter and blogs. Again, one of those people who's constantly challenging my thinking and saying, yeah, Jameez, you're not as smart as you really think you are. I met her for the first time at a brunch that I organized in Singapore last weekend, where 30 people showed up uh, from a tweet up. And she's actually going to be here in Shanghai at NYP conference next week. Uh, Zach Chase is an amazing teacher in Philadelphia who I've never met in person. He works at Chris Lehman School at the Senior Leadership Academy, and now he's actually going to Harvard. Um, I had, I've done several projects with him on the fly where I put some pictures up on Flickr, his students downloaded them, wrote poems about them, I took their poems, I created songs, put the songs back up online. Amazing teacher. Will Chamberlain is a teacher from a really, really small town in Missouri who I have never met before, um, but he's been very supportive. I did this project where I put a picture of, or a, a picture story of my daughter online. His kids found it, wrote a voice thread blog post about it, got like 150 hits from his kids. My daughter, who's four years old, is freaking out. Uh, John Hanley heard about this story. He's a university professor at the University of Southern Alabama. He assigned that project to his students, and ever since then, my blog has somehow become part of his uh, curriculum. So I get constant uh, new teachers from Alabama reading my blog and commenting and you know wanting mentorship. Um, John T. Spencer is a teacher from Arizona who I've also never met. He self-published three books on teaching and another kind of he's a graphic novelist. He blogs that's the word I'm looking for regularly. And he's his theme is kind of vulnerability, humility, and just being open and honest. And his blogs are amazing. Uh, Mark, look at my really good friend from high school started a school in Africa for girls called Viraja Academy, please, uh, at Viraja, for the plug. And Mark was on the board of this school. I met him through Twitter, and we've become really good friends, to the point where my friend Jason now says, how do you know Mark so well? I just don't get it. Uh, another writer, we're both writing memoirs right now. Uh, Clint Hamada is in the room. I don't remember how or where I met Clint, but he is kind of a, a brother in arms. He's up in Hanoi right now, and we're doing a lot of similar things. We've met uh, at various conferences, and our kids, every once in a while on a Saturday, will Skype each other. They've never met. They just kind of hang out and talk to each other. Um, and he's a... Okay. Steve Katz, another person in this room, who is working with Clint and I, and kind of connecting the things we're doing in Asia. But we're trying to get our schools to blog, we're trying to get our schools to use Google Apps, and whenever I have a question or something's not working, I ask Steve, I ask Clint, but we talk to each other. We started something called a blog alliance between our two schools, and we're hoping to continue that this year. Oh, he's also a dad from California, which I am as well. Carrie Lee Beasley um, started off, we were talking about this last night at dinner, and I don't remember how I met Carrie Lee, but she's another one of those people that just kind of makes me laugh and smile and gives me the support I need whenever I need it. We've become really close friends to the point where our daughters hang out and know each other fairly well. Uh, my wife and her husband have become really good friends as well. Uh, Leslie, we can't really see this picture, but she crashed Shanghai. Uh, conference last year, she showed up with a ukulele, and next thing you know, she's kind of all of our best friends. Uh, for us, throughout the last year, we've stayed in contact and worked on several music projects together, where I would record a song and from Canada or at Kathmandu or India, wherever she would add vocals. Uh, Mary Worrell, I don't really know where I met Mary, but she's an MYP teacher at a new school in the Netherlands. Um, she's a vegan, and she just we have a lot in common. I don't know what it, all the things are, but music-wise, she introduces me to music I like, uh, food, politics, and we just talk a lot, and for school at NYP, we have a lot to learn from each other. Brian Jackson was also in uh, Rod's thing. He is, I would say, the weirdest, like, he's me. We're almost the same exact person. I've never met him before in my entire life. We have so much in common, and the things that he does with his students are amazing. He has this class called the I Believe, This I Believe Project he did, and I've actually met several of his um, students online as well. Mary is a teacher who is in New Jersey, uh, advocate for kind of social justice and student work um, and how they interact in American schools in New Jersey. An amazing photographer. And she's the one that kind of makes my 
idea is valid because she does all the research and says, oh yeah, what you're saying is actually true because here's all the research. So she's the academic support I need. <laughs> Price five, twenty seven. Woo! Um, so what I've done is I've also taken all the slides. I asked the participants to send me a picture of themselves that they took participating. Apparently this was very challenging for some people. That also had me in it. So the pictures were taken by the participants, not from me. Um, and they also wrote a blurb of kind of what our relationship and what connection means to them. So what I've done is it's on my blog at JamiesRaysGhana.com. So if you want to go and check out the slides and go a little bit more slowly and see who these people really are and start following them on Twitter, that would be fantastic. And remember, a network is not, it's personal. So these 20 people are not your 20 people, right? You need to find your 20 people. And final note, I'm doing, sorry, it's the last thing I'm uh, I'm doing a session called Finding Your Tribe. It's a workshop that kind of takes all of these ideas and these people and slows them down. So that's tomorrow at 4 o'clock if you want to come learn more.